All right, so this is going to be part of a little side project I'm working on called Polymythology, where I'm just going to be talking about any topics that interest me, whether it be sports, history, uh, or movies. So I'm going to be covering uh, Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston is one of the most infamous heavyweight boxers of boxing history. Uh, he often played the role of a villain in a lot of his matches. All right, so Sonny Liston was born Charles L. Liston uh, to a poor tenant farmer in Arkansas. He was the second youngest out of a family of around 24. When he was young, his mom uh, moved to St. Louis along with some of the, uh, his older siblings while he remained on the farm with his father. He had a poor relationship with his father who uh, often beat him. And Sonny Liston is even quoted to have said, the only thing my father had ever given me was a beating. Sonny Liston had multiple scars and welts all along his back uh, that seem to prove this. Uh, eventually, uh, enough was enough, and when he was around 13, he ran away from home and was able to hitchhike all the way up uh, to St. Louis, Missouri, uh, where he hoped to reunite with his mother. He tried going to school, but because he lacked the education in Arkansas, there was no way for him to catch up on schoolwork in St. Louis, and he ended up uh, relying on crime to make ends meet with him uh, being accused for of burglary, theft, and robbery. He was very violent as a teenager, and uh, it, it's known that he would even fight cops. And there is one reported case of him uh, breaking a cop's leg in an, in an encounter. Uh, and because of that, all, the entire St. Louis police force knew who Sonny Liston was. And uh, it eventually caught up with him, with him uh, ending up in Missouri State Penitentiary. There, he was able to join a recreational boxing club, and his street fighting was able to develop into a more um, polished boxing style. And in in only a matter of months, he became feared throughout the prison, with few uh, prisoners ever even wanting to box against him. This caught the eye of some powerful uh, figures. And on suspicious uh, circumstances, he was able to get out of prison within two years, despite being sentenced for six years in prison. I say uh, suspicious because he, as soon as he, as he got out, uh, he became associated with Frankie Carbo, who was known as a, uh, a mobster for the Italian mafia and was known to rig a lot of boxing matches. And he was a promoter for Sonny Liston. So uh, Sonny Liston, apart from boxing for the Mafia, he was also a sort of debt collector for them. He'd basically go out and beat up anyone who owed a debt to the Mafia or just beat up anyone that the Mafia told him to. And while a lot of these boxers had fixed fights, when I mean a lot of these boxers, I mean boxers who were associated with the Mafia. Uh, they didn't need to for Sonny Liston because Sonny Liston was so gifted at boxing that there really wasn't a need to fix a fight, and they could just allow Sonny Liston to continue winning. Uh, and he quickly rose up in the rankings, uh, winning by knockout in a lot of his matches, and on four separate occasions, winning by a, uh, a, a surrender where the corner had thrown in the towel, uh, fearing that Sonny Liston would injure uh, their boxer. Uh, Severely, and eventually he he got his uh, okay. Before that, okay. So a thing about uh, Sonny Liston was how intimidating he was. He was very large, especially for the time. At that time, most heavyweight boxers were only slightly over the two hundred pound um, limit. Well, heavyweight doesn't have a limit, but he, most boxers were only slightly over two hundred pounds. While Sonny Liston was closer to around two thirty. And he had very large hands to the point where he needed custom-made gloves just to fit his hands because most manufactured gloves just weren't comfortable and couldn't fit him. Uh, he eventually got a shot at uh, to be recognized on the world stage when he got a fight with Cleveland Williams. Cleveland Williams was known as the strongest power puncher in the heavyweight division at the time. Um, and beating Cleveland Williams would finally give Sam a sense of recognition on an uh, international level. And he was able to accomplish that, knocking out Cleveland Williams. Uh, and then he continued to have success. 
and he was aiming for uh for the heavyweight title at this point, but he never got a chance to uh, aim for the heavyweight title. That was until uh he his fight with Arthur Westfall. He beat Westfall in within the first round, knocking him out. At this point, there really wasn't a way to avoid Sonny Liston having an opportunity to for the heavyweight title. Because see, most people didn't want Sonny Liston to become the heavyweight champion because of his demeanor and his uh, association with the mafia. But at this point, they really had no other choice. So they put up a, a fight between Sonny Liston and Floyd Patterson, who was the reigning heavyweight champ at the time. Okay, so Floyd Patterson was basically a polar opposite to Sonny Liston. Where Sonny Liston was a rude and uh, rude street thug turned heavyweight boxer, uh, Floyd Patterson was a more respectable sportsman type boxer and uh, an admirable figure. Okay, with Floyd Patterson's fighting style, he had a lot of similarities to uh, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson took a lot of inspiration from Floyd Patterson. They both had a similar fighting style that relied a lot on uh, bobbing and weaving. Uh, but the main difference was that where Mike Tyson relied mainly on his power, Floyd Patterson relied on his speed. See, Floyd Patterson is probably the fastest heavyweight uh, boxer when it comes to raw hand speed. Of course, other fighters like Muhammad Ali were faster overall when it came to footwork, head movement. But when it came to just hand speed, I don't think there's a heavyweight boxer who could match Floyd Patterson. But... <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, like Floyd Patterson wasn't sure on whether or not his speed would be enough to overcome Sonny Liston's power, as Sonny Liston would, was able to duke it out with Cleveland Williams, who was a renowned power puncher within the heavyweight division and was able to outpunch Cleveland Williams. So Floyd Patterson really didn't want to go into this fight to begin with. And you can even see that before the first round of their uh, of their fight, with Sonny Liston looking, looking uh, dead ahead at uh, Floyd Patterson and Floyd Patterson keeping his eyes down. And unfortunately, Floyd Patterson had reason to be afraid, and he eventually got knocked out uh, by Sonny Liston. And at this point, Sonny Liston gains the world title. And at this point, Sonny Liston realized, he looked back on his behavior throughout the throughout his uh, career, his career, and his associating with the mafia, and he decided he wanted to make a change. He wanted to appear as a a good champion for the public, someone who the public could admire. And he had seen other champions on the return home be greeted by hundreds of fans uh, upon arriving at the airport. And he assumed the same would be uh, true for him. Unfortunately, aside from family members and maybe a few friends, there was no one there to greet him at the airport. At this point, Sonny Listen realized that he really had no fans. There was no one really supporting him at this point outside of just his uh, close friends and family. His years of appearing as a villain and his heavyweight career alienated him from uh, any sort of like good publicity. Uh, any publicity he got was just publicity about how ruthless and vicious he was in boxing. And nothing positive was ever said about him. And this kind of started breaking down his... Uh, his bravado, and uh, it made him feel a lot more self-conscious about who he was and like what he was doing. He eventually got a uh, rematch against Floyd Patterson, hoping that this would help boost his publicity. And while he was able to defeat Floyd Patterson for a second time, did this little to it did little to uh, actually improve his public appeal. The public still didn't want to treat him as the world champion. They didn't respect him as the world champion. And right before the second fight, a strange man appears in the middle of the ring and looks uh, dead at uh, listen. and then he puts his hands up before exiting the ring. And who was this man, you ask? Uh, it was Cassius Clay, who would later change his name to Muhammad Ali. At this point, Cassius Clay had just started his, had started gaining traction in the pro division, and he was already an Olympic uh, amateur champion. Uh, and... He saw a lot of success in uh, the heavyweight division, and he promised Sonny Liston that within the next year, he would beat him uh, in a match. And Sonny Liston came into the fight uh, rather confident. He thought he could uh, beat this rising star pretty easily, but by the sixth round, he realized that there was something different about Muhammad Ali. He was 
he was able to defeat Floyd Patterson, who had superior hand speed to Muhammad Ali, but he was just not used to fighting a heavyweight who could move around as fast as Muhammad Ali did. He could deal with the hand speed. He couldn't deal with the footwork and the head movement. And by the sixth round, he refused to get up from his corner, and his corner man threw in the towel saying that Sonny Liston was unable to continue. And this just gave him even worse publicity because now he wasn't just a hated uh, heavyweight champ, but now he was seen as a coward. A coward who, as soon as the going gets tough, would just rather throw in the towel than admit the feet. And then came his rematch against Muhammad Ali, which, again, just it further destroyed him. Um, and this is where the infamous Phantom Punch came into play. The Phantom Punch was a light punch that Muhammad Ali landed against Sonny Liston which was able to knock him down. And people uh, believe that the fight was rigged because of how easily Sonny Liston dropped after this phantom punch. In my personal opinion, I don't think the fight was rigged because if you rewatch the tape, Sonny Liston came in with a lot of momentum when Muhammad Ali threw that punch. So it was more of Sonny Liston's momentum working against him. So as soon as that punch lands, the momentum made the punch seem a lot more powerful in which, and knocked him down. And this is where you get one of the most famous images in boxing. The image of Muhammad Ali standing over saying, listen, right after he gets knocked out from the Phantom Punch. And this was a nail in the coffin for saying, listen. At this point, he had no way to recover from this because uh, he was hated in the eye of the public. There was no way he was going to gain the respect anymore. And he had just lost his title. And in, on an attempt to regain the title, lost again. At this point, Sonny Liston was a destroyed man. He, after this day, he never aimed for the heavyweight title anymore. While he had multiple fights and he was he had success in those fights, he never attempted to rise up onto the world stage anymore. He was still fighting high level fighters. Don't get me wrong, but nothing on the level of Floyd Patterson, Muhammad Ali, or uh, Cleveland Williams. And then, in 1970, Sonny Liston was found dead in his home. And what's suspicious about this is that it was the autopsy proved that it was due to a heroin overdose. But while Sonny Liston was known as a drinker, there was no record of him ever abusing drugs. And on top of that, he uh, heavily disliked needles. So the fact that he would uh, inject themselves, I don't know. It, it just doesn't seem right. So a lot of people believe that uh, the death was uh, directly caused by the mafia. Perhaps Sonny Liston was going to give out information or they just needed, needed to get rid of him. And um, and in doing so, they uh, decided to overdose him with heroin and make it and stage it as a suicide. And that really brings the end to uh, the tragic life of Sonny Liston. He was a man who grew up with a lot of struggle in his life. And then had whenever he had success, there was no one really there to back him up. He was really alone throughout his entire career, aside from maybe some close fan, uh, close friends and family, the public, in the public eye, he was hated, and this is something that just, it gnawed on him for years and years until his eventual death in uh, 1970. So that's uh, about it.